What's going on, YouTube? We're back with Shades, and we're continuing your Let's Play of Katawa Shoujo. Last time we left off, we just had lunch on the roof with four lovely ladies, Hanako, Lily, Emmy, and Rin. So now, um, we're back home, uh, back to class, and, um, we left, we were left off with a very real thought that, um, there's always someone to go to for help in the world, and, um, you're never alone. So, uh, I already had my, I already had my two cents about that, so anyway, let's move on. If they worry, if anyone worries, I'll smile. I'll smile enough for all their worries to go away. Really? I could've just added that last two bits? Fuck that. Fuck that. I always do that. Cause I'm not sure where the where the time skips will be. Jeez. Hello, Muto. The moment the bell rings out, a collective sigh of relief comes from everyone. Much of the morning has been taken up by a droning lecture on sto stoichiometry. Stoichiometry? A topic entirely unbefitting of the insufferable heat permeating the classroom. I know how to properly pronounce that word, but I can't remember how to do it right now. Uh, whatever. I'm, it's gonna bother me for a while until I remember it. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna scream at the end of this recording like, THAT'S HOW YOU PRONOUNCE IT! Whatever. Knowing that attempting to teach anymore will be an exercise in futility, Muto gives up and begins clearing the teaching materials from his desk for the day. As meaningless banter starts filling the classroom, I notice Hanako getting up and coming to my desk. She's been a lot less withdrawn lately, something which gives me a me small measure of satisfaction. Hello, Hisao. Hey, wanna go pick up Lily then? It's close to the time when she needs to get going if she's going to make the flight. Um, about that. She said she might be held up a bit by her classmates. I suppose that makes sense. Her class usually gets off a little earlier than ours, so Lily would normally just have just come to our classroom. Her class must be sending her off. Well, never mind. We can wait outside her classroom for once, right? She gives a small giggle before nodding, the two of us taking our things and leaving for 3-2's classroom. When we reach our destination, I stop at an idle amusement at the scene inside. One of the shorter girls from the class has Lily wrapped in an enthusiastic hug, her head no higher than Lily's chin. Her other friends, of which there were several, are gathered around her as well. Lily simply t smiles kindly and hugs her back. Remember, for a blind person, being able to hold someone is more important than, like, words. Because they can hear you just fine, but they want to know what it's like to be... Just, just, what, what you, any, like, sort of indication of what you look like. And that's so cute, because, like... I mean, it's, like, profound to think. Like, what's it, like... What, it, what shows more affection for a person with a disability? Like, like... Like when uh, Lily touched our face. Like, like that's a show of her affection toward Hisao. Like, like I, I care about you. I, I, I feel like I'm close enough to you to say, Hey, can I touch your face? I want to know what you look like. I guess Lily must be pretty popular. Compared to Shizune's harsh but fair dictatorship of 3-3, Lily seems more like a mother figure for 3-2, to say nothing of her height and looks. Kenji's pointedly cool demeanor as he packs up his thing as his seat in the back corner of the classroom is expected. No doubt, far from a fan of the fuss being made of about Lily's living, leaving. God, I'm tongue tied. <sighs> Looking beside me and seeing Hanako following my gaze, I decide to finally enter the room. Afternoon, Lily. It's just me and Hanako. Hanukkah withers noticeably when exposed to the din being made around Lily. Try she might, I doubt she'll ever completely get over her social anxiety. Hello. Lily managed to work out of her pos position res reasonably well. Her classmates detaching herself without a second word. A look of slight ex exasperation is writ written on Lily's face, though I can't say I blame her. Hello, Hisao. Hanako. Do you have much time before the flight leaves? I give a quick glance at my watch, taking the trip to the airport into account. There's a good 10, maybe 15 minutes left while still accounting for contingencies. Yeah, we still have a few minutes to kill. I wouldn't worry about missing it yet. Ah, this is Hanako? Uh-oh, I think we just had it inadvertently become entangled in Lily's social web. The girl's probably part of the legally blind faction of the class like Kenji, giving her almost window pane like spectacles, her short roughly cut hair gives her a look that fits her excitable expression. Hello, um... She takes Hanako's hand and pulls it up and down enthusiastically. I really don't get how girls can be so social to someone that they know is a friend of a friend. Oh dear. You're gonna give Hanako a heart attack. While Hanako exchanges nervous greetings, I look around the room for my short and overdressed next door neighbor. I try as I might, he seems to have slipped out of the classroom without anyone noticing. For a moment I try to think of possible career paths that could reasonably benefit from his single skill, before putting my mind to more pertinent matters. 
Lily seems pleased, if somewhat guarded, about the enthusiasm Hanako suddenly excited from those around her. She might not see it, but Hanako's much less panicked about the affair than I anticipated. Shuffling my way through the gaggle of classmates, I eventually managed to reach her. Don't worry, Hanako's fine. Thank you, I thought she might be overwhelmed by them. Don't worry, we'll be gentle. <clears throat> God, I, I hate the fact that I have phlegm in my throat right now. It's worse. Both of us grimace in unison. Hanako's nervous grin stays plastered on her face as another couple of girls move in to meet her. It's kind of amazing that even just a month ago, she'd never have been able to cope with a situation such as this. Even when I first met her, the two of us completely alone, she sprinted from the library. So, got everything you need? It's all packed. I just have to go to buy my room to pick it up on the way. And Hanako and I need to change. I guess we'd better get going then. Hanako? Hanako's head flicks up towards us in a flash, her face rather unmistakably appreciating a chance to extricate herself from a small group gathered around her. Coming! <clears throat> the long taxi ride to the airport is surprisingly pleasant, despite the three of us being rather squished together to fit <gasps> the small back seat. Ugh, on the other hand, maybe despite isn't the wrong word. Lily pays the fare to the driver as we file out, Hanako's eyes flittering left and right. Thankfully, there aren't too many people around, most of them being inside the main building rather than milling around outside. Oh, look at you! It's Akira, and I don't remember your name. Ahidaki. Uh, it isn't hard to spot Akira and Hideki leaning against the fence while taking to pass the time. Talking to pass the time. A large black travel bag, complete with wheels and travel handle, leans against the fence alongside them. Hideki's first notice us, pointing us out to Akira, who gives an overenthusiastic wave. Hey! Hey! I grab Lily's travel bag for her as we go to meet the two, earning a nod of appreciation. I've got all my stuff here. You got yours? Plane ticket as well? Don't worry, I have everything. You? Yep, all ready to go, and this is loud in my ears. Not without some problems along the way, I might add. A snide remark is he has his head roughly dragged around by firmly clamped on hand. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I kinda sorta forgot it was in my trousers pocket. Trousers that I'd put in the wash. Oh no. Don't worry, don't worry. Did you know you can print out tickets if you order online nowadays? It's really cool. Hideki's pain expression says that this wasn't the solution found quickly. It could have been worse, I guess. We'd better start off then. Check-in should be ready by now. Yeah, you're right. There's a certain amount of wistfulness in both their voices, to say nothing of the people left behind. Meeting their family again after all these years would be a big for them. Lily. Hanako wraps Lily in a gentle hug to say goodbye, which is one which is warmly reciprocated. Lily and I share a brief hug afterward, each of us saying our goodbyes. No! Go after your woman! <laughs> Beside us, Akira and Hideki break off from a small hug and a word or two between them. It would probably look quite nice if not for the most comical height difference between the two. Are they together? Please say yes, because I ship it hard. Come on, please. Come on. Wait, they're cousins. But this is Japan. But they're cousins. But this is Japan! <clears throat> Whatever. I'm not gonna get too hung up over it. Lily takes a hold of her sister's arms once that all the needs need to be said, and farewell is said. What? <laughs> I said that's so wrong. Lily takes a hold of her sister's arms once all that needs to be said, and farewell is said. The two walking past the huge glass doors. Goodbye, Hisao, Hanako. See ya, don't do anything stupid, shorty. We wave at them until they disappear from sight in the throng of people moving about inside. And then, we're alone. Well, that's that. I turned to see Hideki had already begun walking off. See ya. He throws a hand in the air in a manner I'd expect of Akira. In the end, it's just Hanako and me left standing outside. Oh god, my throat is so raw right now. I rest my hand on her shoulder. She absentmindedly gazes toward the front doors of the building, as if she might catch a glimpse of either of the two before they d disappear. Don't worry, the time will pass fast. She hesitates for a moment, but eventually nods. With the, search with the scorching heat of summer sun beating down on us, we make our way to the nearby bus stop. She's wearing that in summer? God. I mean, it looks good, but the thing is, it looks hot. And the hat, too. Jesus. It's strange, really. Just when I'd begun to see Lily differently, she leaves in what almost feels like a pilgrimage to the past. In a way, though, that's what I've been doing since coming to Yamaku. 
as much as they may reflect on everything that's happened to me, I really am hardly unique. Everyone has their own circumstances and separate paths to get where they are now. Yet I still can't really work out how I should proceed. My life has, may have practically been reset, and I still can't find anything that's satisfactory fills a hole that I still feel in myself. Maybe Lily's leaving will be a good thing for me. Without her to lean on, I need to do more for myself. I'll have to be there for Hanako as well. It feels strange to have so much changing so quickly after my months in that hospital that seemed to exist so separately from reality, but that's all the more reason for me to keep focused. I can't let any opportunity slip out of my fingers in my attempt to rebuild my life. We faded to white, what just happened? Oh, next chapter. Present. Huh. Ah. Wait! Wait! We didn't we, we didn't even have we what? What? We didn't even we, we we didn't kiss yet. We're already in act three. What? 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 Bullshit! This is bullshit! <laughs> I rest my hand on my chin as I acidly look out the window, yet another of Muto's flexors droning on and on as if it were endless. The summer sky is almost alluring in its bright cerulean splendor. Only the odd passing cloud breaks up the deep blue expanse. This feeling of longing is probably out the outdoor side of me yearning to escape. Nakai, could you answer this? That side of me is lost to the past now, though. In that case, I think it would be using... An suffix? Correct. Moving on, the suffix form. As my attention towards Muto slips once again, I spot Misha give me an enthusiastic thumbs up and a nod to settle her, and I nodded her to settle her down. Oh god, my nose is killing me. It's been a handful of days since Lily left for Scotland, days which have passed relatively peacefully. Life largely continued as usual, in contrast to what I expected, while thoughts of her have danced around on the edges of my mind since she'd left. Present events seem to manage to subdue them, at least for the time being. So I find myself idly chatting with Hanako as usual when lunchtime finally rolls by. Are the later ones in the series good as well? Not really, you're probably best off just sticking to the original. His later books don't live up to it, other than, God, than maybe God Emperor. Thanks, I wasn't really sure if... Oh no! It's them! Oh god. Hang on. I'm double checking my nose, cause like, yeah. As Hanako steps to the side, I see she's in a straight up in a typically business-like manner, flanked by her ever-present bright-haired shadow. Try as I might, I can't read any hint of their intent from their faces. She's in his poker face, and Misha's seemingly boundless cheerfulness are a devilish combination. Morning, she's in, Misha. Um, hi. Oh God, let me try to clear my nose again, cause Jesus Christ, this is not helping. Okay, okay, hopefully that works. I accentuate the greeting with a nod to Shizune in order to get the point across. She promptly and curtly returns the gesture to both of us. It's been a long while since I've really talked to either of them. For a while, I thought they might have been avoiding me, but I eventually came to the conclusion that Shizune really isn't the type to do so. Morning! Shichan says that Muto wants to see you sometime. Because of the statement, my face contorts as if I'd just eaten spoiled food, giving Misha no end of amusement. Wahahaha! <laughs> Anyone, anyone think you were in trouble, Hichan? You may not be aware of it, but you have the least to worry about in, out of anyone in this class. What an unexpected vote of confidence. Even Hanako nods hesitantly to affirm the point. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. There was something I wanted to ask you, though. And what might that be, Hichan? I have a feeling this won't go over well, but here goes. Is there any reason why you and Lily don't get along? It seems like even a little civility would help you both in your duties. Oh god! <laughs> oh, the puffy cheeks. She looks kind of cute like that, but otherwise, ugh. By the way, whoever drew Shizune, glasses don't work like that unless they're bifocals. Because, <laughs> like, like, unless they're reading glasses, really, like, where you're looking down. But otherwise, you need, like, a full range of your eyes to see. But then again, they're anime eyes, so whatever. But, like, god... She's in his cold stare after Misha happily signs the word stops me in my tracks. In hindsight, I really could have worded that better. Out of the corner of my eye, I'm sure I see Hanukkah move back, just a little. Thankfully, she notices this and lets her temper dissipate as she forcefully runs her hand through her hair to let off steam. Perfectly on cue, Misha begins interpreting the second she's in his arms begin to move. 
I would say that such matters aren't, aren't relevant to you, but since you seem to have befriended Lily... She pauses to adjust her glasses, evidently attempted to articulate her point in the best possible manner. While I assume the same of her, I cannot call my own views on the matter unbiased. Suffice to say, we were closer before than we are now. Shizne makes a quick gesture to Misha to stop her from interpreting, then has a quick meeting with her before proceeding. The fact that the two can communicate so easily, yet so secretly right in front of us, is slightly disconcerting. Hanako seems to share my curiosity at the proceedings, looking on with thinly masked interest. As I finish their opaque conversation, Misha looks slightly deflated, I guess her opinion on the matter wasn't followed. Shi chan says you should ask Lily about it, she doesn't want to be the one that gets you involved. Ah oh well, I'll just have to ask her after she gets back. At least I got some information out of Shizune. The two have been clo- have been- have- uh, de de. The two have been on close terms means that they weren't always at each other's throats. Or at least not quite to this extent. I understand, thanks anyway. Oh god. With a nod and a farewell, the two break away and walk out the door. No doubt headed straight for the student council room. Could have gone worse, I suppose. Hanako lets out a long breath, relieved at the confrontation's re resolution. I can't say I blame her. I'll see you later, then. Yeah, I'll meet you in the tea room. See ya. With that, she waves and joins the trickle of students leaving the classroom. Nakai, could I speak with you for a moment? Delivered in his typical monotone manner, he apparently decided that I need a reminder to see him already. Oh, is this about, like, um, being a scientist in the future? Eventually, I finish packing up my things. By the time I reach his desk, the classroom is close to empty. Uh, yes, sir? He looks up, taking measure of my face before giving an awkward, rather obviously acted chuckle. Ah, God. No need to feel guilty. You're, no, you're not in any trouble. I just want to ask you something. I've asked a few of the other students so, so far. There's something at least. For a moment I thought of my maxim of keeping my head down and pen up had failed me. So what did you want to talk about? To start with, what do you think of your progress in this class so far? Good? Bad? I had to test that kind of question. For a fair amount of time, I try to think of a response that is neither p pathetically humble nor cocky. I'd say I'm doing okay, the work doesn't seem too hard, and I'm doing better on the test than I thought I would. That's a good answer. A correct one, too. I gave a mental sigh of relief and a satisfaction. To say that I don't get a little pride from his comment would be a blatant lie. In the maelstrom of thoughts clouding my mind after learning that I'd be transferred to Yamaku, my school grade seemed utterly unimportant. Being entirely clueless as to what skill level would be assuming to me, once I actually got here, I was hugely relieved to, when I found out that I understood well enough the schoolwork we'd be doing. <clears throat> Since I know your circumstances might have thrown a wrench in the works, but have you given any thoughts to your future? My future? What do you what you'd like to do as a profession? Do you have any thoughts of where you'd like to be in 10 or 20 years' time? It wouldn't be surprised if you covered this ground in your previous school, but I don't have any record of it if you have. I suppose the last year of high school is a time when students would need to be thinking about such things. To be honest, I really haven't lent much thought, compared to my immediate situation. Catching on my thinking, Muto speaks up. It's okay if you haven't decided on anything specific yet. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of your classmates are still undecided after all. Maybe pursuing one of your talents. Oh god. Uh, he's rather obviously trying to squeeze an answer out of me, and something about his previous wording makes me suspicious. He didn't seem to be intent on asking everybody like this, so he must have had some kind of selection criteria. At a guess, I get our grades in his class. Well, something in science might be the path of, a, of least resistance. His face brightens, no doubt pleased at the thought of a prized student following a subject as a career path. Good, having a general idea is the first step. I would advise you to think on it, though. I will. Things are kind of settling down, which will help. Good to hear. Oh, and I've noticed that I Ikezawa's attendance and grades have improved since you came to be friends. I'd like to thank you for that. Hanako Ikezawa. Huh. I'm surprised you noticed we knew each other. He gives a chuckle as awkward as his smile. This guy really has no idea how to properly act around others. Every facial movement seems like an act of careful but misdirected choreography. You could say that having a general idea of who knows whom is part of a teacher's job. Catching himself before he goes off on a tangent, he loudly coughs into his hand. <clears throat> I'm sure you have things to do, though, so I'll stop there. Please do think about where you're headed from here, as so you don't have long to go before you finish high school. I will. Thanks. The brief talk ended. I take my leave. He goes back to fussing with teaching materials on his desk. This is one of the times I'm envious of Lily, almost maddeningly so, to have one's future so clear and so assured, yet working towards it from such a young age. 
It's an idea so utterly irreconcilable with my own thoughts, marred in the present day, just as they've always been. Hmm, that 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 chapter wasn't even 30 minutes. Well, it could just be the, a, a side effect of the fact that I read fast. Oh, what the hell? Walking through the lobby to the cafeteria, I silently rue my daily routine having been completely thrown off. It had seemed like a normal day. I arrived in class before most, due to waking early and having been quite adept at chucking my own pills down without choking as I get ready for the day. When the students trickled in, one never materialized. Hanako. I step inside, my eyes scanning the expanse of the cafeteria in search of a suitable place to take a seat. It's a task made more difficult by the group of students moving about and busily talking. Yeah! My hand pounds my back hard a couple of times, severely winding me. I couldn't care less about the culprit as I focus my thoughts on my chest and the near atomic reaction. Automatic. My hand instinctively tightens tight on my breast as I start going through steps I rehearse in my mind every other day. Breathe steadily, in and out. With a measure of relief, I can slowly feel my chest becoming less tense. By the time I look back up, my face is covered in sweat from the experience. Fucker! How'd I know it was him? Hey, man, are you okay? God damn it! Don't do that, you idiot! He retreats back, an expression of unease written on his face. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have barked at him, considering he had no way to know. I give a sigh right, and write myself with some difficulty. Sorry, I just have some chest problems. Sharp knocks aren't good. It seems strange to see him so upset. The fact that I can't do anything about it irritates me. Let's get lunch. Okay, it's good to have some company for once. Oh no! Why'd it have to be him? I hate him! God! Why'd it have to be Ken Kenji? Just let him die! We're in Act 3, I need to stop interacting with him. I don't care if he's my sweet mate. I don't care! You start off to the serving line. One good thing is that Kenji and I can make small talk nowadays, as opposed to only my only interaction with him being in anti-feminist lectures. Seems like it'd be hard to find an empty table. There's a few people I wouldn't mind sitting with. Nobody's like you, though. I feel a shiver run through my spine. Clarify that now. They don't listen. Their minds are closed. It's like it's, a, it's the media, man. The goddamn brainwashing mainstream feminist fascist media. Ugh, I hate him so much. He needs to die. Quickly. He takes a breath, and I savor the second of silence. Damn, they control everything. Everything but you and me. I relax a little while we grab our food and drink. So what have you got for me? Huh? Come on, you've been hanging around Sato and the other chick for ages now. Rumors are all over my class, and probably some of the others too. Eavesdropping isn't a good habit. Let me guess, you never do it. Not even when you're bored, really? Well, I, uh... Fine, point taken. Both of us stopped to have soup ladled into a couple of small bowls and placed into our trays. The concoction that lands to our bowls looks pretty questionable, but at least it smells reasonably good. As we take our seats at a miraculously free table, I try to think of something that would actually interest him at all. How about can come up with an acceptable topic? I found an answer to that question you asked a couple of weeks back, where Lily's non-Japanese half comes from, that is. Good man, it's Russia, right? Totally Russia. I totally assumed Russia myself. Or Germany. Scotland. He visibly stopped in his tracks. Scotland? Yeah, that was my reaction too. She can speak English fluently and everything. Damn it! Do you realize what this means? How terrifying this news is to me? Oh, come on! There's a, there's a specific choice for this? I don't have the walkthrough open. <clears throat> I didn't think I'd need it. Oh, God. Give me a second, guys. Okay, we just ignore his insane ramblings. I dug into my phone, hoping he'll take a hint from my silence. I just lost t a thousand yen, man. A thousand yen. Damn, this is the worst day ever. No such luck. You're kidding me. You made a bet about her nationality? One of the dudes in my class was bugging me about it. I gave him some of my wisdom, and he had the audacity to say my logic was wrong. So what do you think? Eh, hey, Germany or something. Ha! Boom! I'm not the only one. Doesn't matter. What matters is my thousand yen. Damn, this day is ruined thanks to her. What a bitch. Oh my god. How is it her fault? I'd punch- I would- I would knock this guy's block off. So easily. Like, 
Not only is he like a really, really ignorant asshole, but he just insulted my friend. I would have punched him square in the glasses. I don't care. I don't care if he looks like Harry Potter. He looks utterly devastated as he wolves down several clumps of his soggy, soy-soaked rice. It only takes a few mouthfuls before he pokes his chopsticks at me, stabbing at the air repeatedly in Revelation. Did, don't, did your mother ever tell you not to speak with your mouth full? He gives me a dirty look before choking down the rest of the food left in his mouth and taking a gulp of juice. It's rather unsightly. Remembering my own food sitting in front of me, I decide to get the task of eating the cafeteria food over and done with as fast as possible. The sooner I do so, the sooner the experience will be over. So as I was sick, why would anyone want to live in that place anyway? I mean, what is there to see? Grassy plains? That's it. Lots and lots of grassy plains. Some people like that, you bastard. And men in kilts. Stereotype. I'm not sure which is worse, the food or his worldview. I can feel my face being dragged down by their combined weight. Not that he'd notice or care. It's not that bad. Why do you care about her so much anyway? She's just your class representative after all. He gives a malevolent chuckle. Where there's anyone but Kenji, I feel uneasy at how he sounds. I finally found the chicken feminist leech's armor. It took a while, but I'm confident this is going to be how we can bring down the whole system. I'm about to blow your mind. Are you ready? I tune out his ramblings for a moment as I finish my rice and start in the unappetizing soup. One taste is enough to confirm it's cold. Ready as I'll ever be. I confirm that Lily is the Mafia. What? Alright, stay with me for a second here, and I'll describe the scene. I wish I could do otherwise. Lily's there, walking down the street after school. You're not stalking her, are you? No damn, man, I have, I have some self-preservation. Self but not dignity, or morals, or social standards. Anyway, as I was saying, the car pulls up next door, and guess who steps up? A man in a pinstripe suit, wave, waves her in, and two just leave just like that. I tell you, man, she's under protection. Under protection. That was her sister. That was Akira. Her family is very... Affluent. Ugh. A man in a... Oh, I can see where this is going now. It takes effort not to sign exasperation. Let me guess, this man was about average height, had a slightly slender build, had blonde hair, looked foreign, and smiled a lot. He looks positively stunned. I take advantage of the moment to quiet, of quiet to quickly gulp a mouthful of cold soup. It seems you're more observant than I thought. Yes, I have chosen Will. He giggles a little and nods to himself so dramatically that it looks comical. I can't tell whether it's intentional or not, and that fact makes me frown. This has important ramifications, you know. If she really is connected to the people like them, and we're smart about what we do with this information, we can turn this into our greatest weapon against the student council. Once he starts rambling into, his, into conspiracy terror story, my juice suddenly becomes much more important. Only half listening to his pontifications, my mind drifts to the matter of Lily and her anti antipathy for Suzanne. Really, why? I'm guessing like the entire plot here is to, is to somehow fix the gap between... Um, um, uh, Shizune and um, Lily, which I don't know what it could be. I mean, they're cousins, yes. And they used to get along when they were children. But I guess in the biggest clue here is that one chunk. And I'm gonna um, let this video run for a, this episode run a little longer just to, so I can get rid of Kenji. I don't want to deal with him in another episode. The past between them is steadily becoming more coherent, but I'm not even sure if I should be learning of her past this way. Indeed, if I even even if I do work what went on, it does, really doesn't seem like my business to go and interfere. Damn, not having Lily around is making my thoughts wander. I'm noticeably more bored and sullen with other company, and same goes for Hanako. All we do during lunch is, uh, anymore is eat and play chess. Come to think of it, I need to go check on Hanako after school too, considering her much improved attendance. I'm guessing she's come down with something. Oh, we're done! Oh, oh thank god. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave this part here. I'm just so tired of Kenji. I hate him. I hate him so much. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos from me or from this series, hit that subscribe button. And you are now exiting the Shadyverse. My name's Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the shade. See you guys later.